here to do it's just something we could do while we're here so this is one of my rigs it's uh, uh can we see here spider cast okay little multiplier got a uh, dexter wedge on there okay good for bass mackerel stuff like that it will catch flatties too and then I add a little bit of red wool on the end it, it works red works for fish and it's kind of odd really because red is the first color that disappears underwater it only got a depth um, Red's the first color that disappears but red is really good for catching fish and it's just a single piece one-handed rod it's Come on, focus. Uh, it's not going to do it, it's not playing. I'll try another way. It's just a Berkeley. So, but that's a dangerous combination. really is. Works a treat. And then over here, got some stuff on the beach to show you too. Um, export. I like the export. Very basic gear. Just come in light, you know. And when you're fishing, coming light is almost impossible. Especially when there's a few of you. Just got some jellies. Just put a, you know, a hook down through the end, sticks out here, and then a little lead weight, a little like a ball bearing with a hole through it at the end to give you casting weight. They work well. And, you know, trebles there, old camera case, which are like obsolete now. Um, some float gear. Float stoppers. Different weights. Lots of different jellies because we we bought I bought the gear today for spinning. And just perking jellies. And then I've got oh, sniffing a bit, I've got a bit of a chest cord in here, some night lights. Snap sticks, you know, hooks, and then some shock leader, some more of that wool that I put on there. And these are the ones, uh, Kingdom Hiker. I don't know if you know his channel, he's a good friend of mine and he's a good guy. Let me find this one. I mentioned to him the other day about for his fishing kit. Get maps, hang on and get lots of them because in the UK maps number two maps number three maps number two and number three really the ones you want to get these I put a bit of red one on the bottom as well these are fantastic for everything I mean, these are the boy. If I could choose anything, I would have these. I got all the other stuff, you know. Um, but, um, but the maps are, are the boy for it. I always keep my hooks in uh, corks. So. Back in it now, I see some of the stuff that's come up on the beaches. Oh, what we bought with us for food today. These are... These are homemade scotch eggs. Making ourselves. We shouldn't call them scotch eggs, because they've never seen Scotland. These are more like taffy eggs. And they're lush.
and some pasties, homemade pasties. Right. I know. I'll show you some weird stuff in a minute now. I'll go down to the beach. Um, oh, I'll show you this other setup first. Hang on. Okay, on this rod, this is the one we had the, um, the flounder on, on the flatfish. Just a cheapy little reel. Sea fishing always wrecks everything. This is my salmon, my salmon rod, but it's great for this. So we got this hook. Okay, up. And then, oh, hang on, sorry. A flying hook here. So I, I thread the bottom hook through the worm, all the way down to the bottom of the worm, and then I drag this one, which is facing the other way usually, and it moves. You can slide it down through the top of the worm. So there's a hook at the tail of the worm and the head of the worm. So whichever angle the fish goes at, I'm going to nail it. And it goes up to a swivel. Okay, And then another swivel runs down to a a snap link and a swivel so that moves so when the fish grabs the hook the bait it doesn't feel the weight it doesn't feel it you know because that travels freely and this is half the length so swivel to snap link. I'm just recording a minute guys, hang on. To snap link. Okay, that is half the length of the swivel to hook. So swivel to hook, whatever length you make that, make it half the length for the weight. It stops tangles and it stops messing around. So, hang on, I'll pause it so I don't have to upload a video is going to take me three days, hang on, check this boy out, we thought an, when the tide was coming, going out we thought it was an octopus, but now the tide's out, I mean look at that, it's a friggin alien, look at it, that's a big sucker isn't it? I have never seen one like that before. Yeah, it's like a, it's bigger than a dustbin lid. Yeah, it's crazy. There's another one over there, I'll pause it. Right, when it's high tide, this is why I come to this spot. See, the sea's just flowing. See here? There's a blowhole, so the water comes up and goes and blows back out, and it really upsets all the sand and gets the food. So the, the fish are eating all around here. So you spot one of those that you know at high tide um, gets covered in water because it was up to here not long ago when I was fishing. Now it's gone, but if you know it goes up. The water goes up to that level and hits them. This will be a great area to fish. Okay. And that's it, there's another jellyfish down there, but I gotta go. I've gotta go get something else. This video is getting too long. Okay, this is one of the other reasons we came. Samphire. Best time of the year to get it. Really nice, good with fish, good with salads, things like that. Need to well, you know, fry it in a little bit of butter, but you can eat it, you know, raw as it is. Very nice. All these posh asshole chefs on the TV, they're all like, uh, you know, they're all over the place after this stuff. Um, so we've gone to another place now to, to get some. Now you can pickle it, so put it in some vinegar, but it's, it's not the best. It's not the best thing to do to pickle it. Um... People used to, in England, you can't get it as easy as you can in Wales. Um, but they used to have 
climbers before all the modern um, abseiling equipment just just a big old rope climbing down sheer faces you know down on the coast um, sorry I'm on a stretcher um, you know to pick this for the for the royalty and the rich and people used to die collecting it you know it was that hard to get just on the rocky outcrops um, real novelty item pickling it yeah it'll last and it's still good but people complain about it but they're just fuss pots at the end of the day to make it last use it in your meals and what you got left over pickle it so you've got it I'd rather have it pickled than not have it at all so we use the snips George is going to cut some off just about there yeah see just where the fat bit comes to about there snip it about there it guarantees the growth for next year it's got a really lovely smell um, yanking it and pulling it you're just going to kill the roots rip the roots out and kill it so just you know snip the ends see and there one above it George Like that, and then you're gonna have growth for next year. And see the the paler shoots. This is the best time to get it. You know. So, rock samphire. It's really nice. Really, really nice. Real treat. So we're gonna just, just get some from here, and but never take too much. Never take more than you need, because it would just absolutely suck, you know, you come to your rock faces next year and there's none left, and you know, that's just you abusing it. You look, hang on there, see the pale shoots? That's why this year, um, this time of year, you know, spring, late spring, is just right. Okay. Ta-da.